Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bourbon Bites Whiskey Reviews with a Gaming Twist. I'm Clifton, and welcome to another Thursday night live stream. I'm so glad to be back with you guys, um, even though I have failed you on map madness. Um, <laughs> in all seriousness, those of you that caught the competition on Friday, so much fun. Congratulations on, to Cam for moving forward. Um, so, yeah, I let myself down a little bit, but hopefully you guys are still still subscribed, not unsubscribing, hopefully. But so good to see y'all this Thursday evening. Um, I saw a few people chatting here earlier. Um, I saw Donnie in the chat, who is our one of our mods here tonight. He says, I will be lurking, having severe shoulder pain, uh, can barely type this. Oh, Donnie, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, Donnie, we got some other mods here in the chat that'll help you out tonight. So no worries about that. Rest up well. Um, and enjoy the show. How about that? <laughs> Swan says, I will be in the chat tonight too. Well, good to see you, Swan. Swan is a patron of the show. I see Zofa here as well, one of the OG patrons, along with Wesley Zellers. Zeller, sorry, not Zellers. Um, glad to see y'all in the chat. Sugar Kitty is here. Sugar Kitty is a patron and Bite Club member. Cheers to you, Sugar Kitty. Meow, as they say. <laughs> Whiskey Mountains in the chat. Yay, Penelope. Oh, I know. Adriana, you enjoyed the stream. I, I was actually rewatching the stream earlier today. Um, last time I had them on. And uh, you seem you really enjoyed that one. So I'm glad to see you back and uh, getting some new products to try with them tonight. Um, Brandon's going to help out with Donnie in the place um, as our resident mod tonight. Um, cheers to you, Brandon. Hope you're doing well. Uh, and I think I think that was everyone that was pre-gaming. I think I'm going to get caught up with the chat now. Fifth quarter tailgate, of course, our friend uh, Scott. Sorry, <laughs> our friend Scott. Good to see you in the chat. Um, new channel. Make sure to go check out his channel. Bourbon is here as well. Uh, looks. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Ben. Oh, yeah. Because don't worry. Brandon's got us covered. <laughs> um, hanging with Bill in the chat. Holy crap. Did I actually make a live? Yes, you did. Glad to see you, Bill. Um, Bill also has a channel here as well. He's been doing a lot of YouTube shorts lately. Y'all go check out his channel. Emily also here to help support in the mod crew. Good to see you, Emily. Um, and Independent Joe, the link dropper slash incredible mod extraordinaire and amazing whiskey tuber. Joe dropping the link to the Patreon. Yes, as always, we are doing our after party hangout for all patrons, $10 and up tonight. I'm looking forward to that. We're also doing our monthly hangout for everyone, $5 and up this Saturday. So mark your calendars. Should be a lot of fun. But without further ado, I'd like to bring on our guests. Um, one of these guys you met previously back in November. Um, I had them on for the first Penelope stream. But tonight we are we are graced by the presence of both Mike and Danny from Penelope. All right. How you doing? I'm Good to be back. Glad to have you on. And, and I was saying, Danny, great to meet you finally. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, Remember last time Danny was supposed to be on and he fell asleep on his couch. <laughs> well, you guys had an incredible night of a barrel pick that night. I'm surprised any of you made it. So I'm, I'm glad y'all made it again tonight. So <laughs> I, I assume no barrel picks tonight or no, no, very happy. We had one today. We had very a, happy to we had have made it this time uh, in from Texas today, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very cool. So that was, uh, it was a lot of fun, but I, I was, uh, I, I was, I controlled myself though. Cause it was during the day. <laughs> So. Yeah, I know that, that we were talking about earlier, like it's so tough because I'm on the West Coast and I know a lot of you in the chat and you guys as well are East Coast. So it's it's tough. I, I literally race home. I, I eat dinner really quickly and I'm like, I, and I hop on immediately. So it's it's the best I can do out here. But <laughs> yeah, well, but no, I'm glad we love being on. Oh, of course. I mean, and then last time you guys joined us, you had just introduced your toasted series um, of Penelope. A lot of these guys caught that stream. I see a lot of familiar faces in the chat. Um, but for anyone that's new to Penelope, can you guys um, tell us a little bit about yourselves and uh, the brand? Danny, why don't you why don't you kick it off, Danny, tonight? <laughs> right? Oh, but you do it so well, Mike. <laughs> no, no, no. You do it better. Danny, <laughs> take it away. I'll, I'll, I'll chime in. I always go first. All there right. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Danny, um, and that's Mike, you know, um, founders of Penelope Bourbon. And uh, yeah, I mean, see, this is why you're you're so much better. At it, <laughs> well, give you a quick background, Danny. Look, it was a it was a good first opening. But um, yeah, for those that don't know, we're uh, we start Danny and I were next door neighbors growing up. And we started this almost uh, almost four years ago. So we started this in the summer of 2018. And, uh, you know, the high level of the name uh, came from uh, my soon to be born daughter at the time. And, you know, we we're trying to have kids and for a while. And when we finally found out we were having a girl and we knew if we had a girl, that would be the name. I was excited to have my soon to be baby girl. But then an idea came that it had a really nice ring with bourbon after it as well. So it's kind of the, the background on it. And we knew nothing about the space at all. I mean, this was this is was totally foreign to us. And 
I remember just calling Danny because we always just loved whiskey. And I was just like, do you want to start a bourbon company? <laughs> <laughs> and that's really how it started. And we just started cold calling people um, and just kind of like hitting the ground running and doing everything ourselves and started small. And it was, it was an addicting experience because it was like once you got one little piece of the puzzle, like, you know, you, we found the bourbon. Then it was like, all right, we have to find the glass and the corks and the label. And, you know, we have to get our permits. And like, you know, so building the whole puzzle was just a really addicting and exciting experience. Yeah. And I mean, you said, what did you say, three and a half years ago about what, that you guys launched it? I mean, I think just over the past year, I mean, I had you guys on, like I said, last November. I, I mean, I feel like the, the world has finally caught caught ear of Penelope. I've been seeing it on so many different, you know, channels. I've been seeing, you know, other people just like going off. And you guys were at Whiskey Weekend, weren't you, this past? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I heard, I heard awesome. that. I've heard some amazing stories from that. I wasn't able to make it myself. But. It was, was really good. Time. It was a great, great event. I mean, that was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So uh, you guys are, you guys have done awesome with the brand. I mean, I, even back then, I think a lot of people were new to it. I think a lot of people in the chat, I see some people are sipping some Penelope now. Oh, nice. uh, Swan says, love me some Penelope. Just want to be able to find it. Yeah. Swan is in Indianapolis, I believe. Um, and you, then, Swan. yes. And then fifth quarter tailgate says really excited about what Penelope is doing there among the best blenders in bourbon. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I actually blend everything. Danny doesn't do any blending. <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> um uh, there's a new tagline from you from bill can't say nope to the low I love that. Okay. Yeah. what's up buddy good to, good to see you well virtually at least <laughs> i like that tagline and then adam free says no architect yet but sipping on batch three of the rosé and we'll be finished nice. and we'll be jumping to the american nice. next yeah nice, so last adam. time we did we started with the rosé and then we worked our way up to the the regular four grain the barrel strength and then the uh toasted um, we had a couple expressions of that. If y'all missed that stream, make sure to go on my channel. Um, just search Penelope. You'll find it very easily. Um, but tonight, you guys have a brand new product that we're talking about. Um, it's actually the first in a series um, called the Architect Series. So can you guys tell us a little bit about, about this one? This is the bottle for it right here. I've done some damage on my bottle already. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, to be fair, I have too. I, you guys just sent this to me, so... <laughs> So I don't know. We we so we we have a really good partnership with um, Spaceside, and you know they're they're the big company. They're based out of Scotland, but but they actually have a very large cooperage based in Kentucky, and so we we actually have worked with them on. Um, we we primarily have worked with them in the past on uh, their brokerage division for sourcing cast finishes. So you know that's how we worked with them on the rosé cast finish, um, among, and among a couple other just R and D projects we've we've been working on, but. Um, we, uh, Rob, who's our partner over there, he has been uh, kind of talked like over the last like what was it, Danny? Like the last year has been talking about this this these this new stave project that uh, Space Sides, um, basically their wine cooperage out of France called Radu has been working on for for you know maybe a couple years now, and it was just kind of starting to get out of that kind of R and D stage, and and really it was uh, it, it was you know it, it was just a way in which you can like really accurately measure. Um, the, the flavor profile of a stave, right? Mm -hmm. So so going into something, you kind of know with like very, very good certainty what that flavor pro uh, flavor profile is going to impart on, you know, what it was actually meant for the wine industry. So it was like really intended for wine, for mm -hmm. winemakers. And uh, we kind of had this, it, you know, kind of just talking with them and, and really just brainstorming. We felt that there was a really interesting use case for it um, within bourbon. And um that's kind of how it all started. And Danny, I'll tell you kind of, kind of. I mean, that sparked our interest. And then we started uh, actually playing with the staves, you know, you know Speyside brought up the idea of it, kind of introduced us to the, to the product. Actually, I have it. Like these are, these are some of the staves. Whoa. Oh, gotcha. Cool. Danny, um, I don't have those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, they're all, I don't know if you could tell the different kind of color of mm -hmm. the staves. These are all different types. These are different toasted levels. Okay. But, um, the thing it the interest sprung from our toasted series, which mm -hmm. is us blending our three bourbon mash bills together and then rebarreling it in a brand new um, American white oak cask. Right. So mm -hmm. th that was delicious in its own. And we were experimenting with all different char and toast levels. But the one thing about that project was the consistency. There was zero consistency. The variation right. in between barrels was enormous which made it exciting but kind of sparked a little interest in like okay how do we kind of take a similar concept but 
you know, make it a little more consistent or like to the point where we can manufacture that profile a little, you know, kind of know what we're getting before it goes in the barrel or in the tank. Um, mm -hmm. And that's kind of where these staves came in because these are very consistent. They're consistently toasted across the board. It's not like uh, how a barrel is made where it basically goes down a, a line and gets shot with a, you know, a flaming ball of fire. And then, right. you know, you have like variation in its toasted level or its uh, char levels. You know, these are very evenly toasted. Even the wood is they they do chemical analysis on the wood and they know exactly the chemical makeup of it. So they can identify what sort of profiles you're going to get out of that wood. So we can take little samples of these staves and at a micro level, you know, on a on a lab bench basically start blending the different stave combinations together to manufacture this flavor profile. Yeah, I was actually going to show. So um, Joe dropped the link to the website there. You guys can definitely go there and read a bit about this release as well as their other bourbons. Um, I told you all Joe, Joe kills it with the links, but I did want to see if I can sh highlight the back of this real quick where you guys, let me see if I can swap right there. So you guys did like a blueprint kind of oh, thing yeah. back here showing off the, Different. So the dotted line is the standard profile. Was that is that what it no, is? No. So that that was the that's the control. So that is the actual actually came. What what Danny? What was he? The oak engineer. There's literally yeah. there was an oak engineer that's like basically the project manager for Redu, and so he that is the the control is what they kind of use. So uh, each of these staves goes through like this process, what they call the oak scan, and they use some different technologies to really develop that flavor profile. And so they get categorized using that oak scan process. And so the control is the benchmark, what they're starting off with. And mm -hmm. so Penelope Architect, what we call build number one, which is that bottle, is now, a, it's a combination of two different French oak staves. So it's a, like a, more or less, let's say it's like a 60%, we use this low tannin uh, stave that they call Delicat, um, and then maybe 40% of uh, like a medium tannin content stave that they called um, intense. And so what, what was interesting is we actually called uh, Radu and we said, hey, if we kind of give you the blend of staves that we're using, can you punch in your the, the calculator? Can you actually show us what that flavor profile does against your control? And mm -hmm. so that 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 was interesting. I was just interesting to see. And we said, well, that's kind of cool. And the name architect. So we said, you know, man, just put it on the back label. And they oh were yeah, cool that was super cool. Actually, you know, I didn't make the connection blueprint until like you literally said. That. I'm like, oh my god, wait, that reminds me of the the bottle. Um, so we're <laughs> gonna we, we're about and the the whole idea architect is you know we're building these profiles. You know, architecture is kind of an exact science, and unlike kind of just putting a blend together and throwing it into a brand new oak barrel and seeing what comes out, we're we're actually developing the profile before we actually do the blend. Gotcha. Well, I want to get actually interesting. Yeah, it's really, it's been, it's been cool because I've met like, since we, I mean, we've only been doing this for a little while, but like Danny, this was like probably the first time, like really to a really strong certainty that the, the, what we had from the bench trial nearly was almost identical to what was in a bottle, which I just found was like, yeah, all right. They weren't kidding. So it just wasn't, it wasn't BS. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Like you said, yeah, the, the different single barrels um, kind of lack the consistency, but they were unique in themselves. I see a few people. I think they have a couple of those. Um, Brandon says, I'm sad I missed the American. Um, I assume that's the the American. Oh, the 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 light. The light, was light, light yeah, yeah, that was in between the streams that we did. We talked a little bit about it before you guys had actually um, bottled it um last time but i and now it's sold out i missed it too brandon <laughs> but, this, that's even the last if you can see behind me that's the last bottle i have wow <laughs> yeah. we weren't smart enough to put aside some cases <laughs> for ourselves <laughs> yeah well, no, we're, heard, terrible. we're actually terrible with inventory i've heard so many good things about that bottle and i'm i'm sad i missed it but i know you guys have more cool stuff in the works um i know sugar kitty sugar kitty says in new jersey the architect is selling out gotta be quick with it huh. um I saw a few people from Jersey here in the chat. Um, James Taylor says, oh, nice. I have SBO2, but I don't oh, want nice. to open it because I only have one bottle. <laughs> Fun fact about SBO2. So that was like, we were we were trying to like, we were getting a lot of requests for um, like, just like almost not single barrels of our barrel strength. But yeah, kind of, mm -hmm. I guess you could say that. Single barrels of our barrel strength. We're like, well, it's kind of a blend. It's not really 
like it's not a single barrel type prop like product. Right. So we had uh, we've only did two of those, but we did these uh, kind of these were some of the first blends we did out of our facility. And uh, SB stands for small batch. There's one, and then there's SB two. It's the, those are the first two. But we had this really good. Uh, we did our three bourbon mash bill blend with the corn, the rye, and the wheat bourbons. But we also had some really good. Um, we still do have some more of that. This this eight and a half year, forty nine percent malted barley bourbon from MGP. That oh, just wow. gave it a little bit of an extra funk factor. And I I love that. But I remember that bottle. Well, hopefully, so forty nine percent. So it's like fifty one percent corn, forty nine percent malted barley. Yeah. Wow, I've never tried it. Was it was just experimental yeah. from MGP. Yeah. And I have a th I have a thing where if MGP says, "Hey, do you want these barrels?" I don't think I've ever said no. no. <laughs> right. I mean, well, especially now because I've heard that those barrels like they had they had a big stock of it over the past couple of years, but I've heard lately MGP yeah. barrels are getting harder to get unless you already have a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. It's a little yeah, I think it's gotten a little tricky all over. Yeah. Yeah. But but I mean the good thing is like maybe that means there's they're gonna get caught up. I've heard that there's some more six year, seven year MGP bourbon coming out. Um, I just know that there we, we had this sudden rush of all the five year that hit all over the area, and now it's kind of like Where's any MGP? So fortunately, you guys are getting some really good barrels that you guys are using for these blends. Um, bourbon beginnings in the chat. Cheers. Cheers to you. I don't think I've seen you here in the chat, but glad to see you here in the chat. Um, Whiskey yes. Mountains, Adriana says, mm, the Toasted series is so good. I agree. Those samples that I tried, I also had a sample or a bottle at a friend's house um, recently. Toasted series was really, really good. Um, now, is that is that Thank kind you. of still in the works? Is Are you guys still doing that? Or is that kind of like on pause for now? Or how's that how's that going? We are, we had, we just have a lot of uh, orders that we're trying to uh, backfill, mm -hmm. but we are, uh, we are working on a lot, much like, uh, cause our tank size. So we, we only, the reason why we had to do, there's, there's a lot of iterations of it too, is cause we, we operate out of a smaller facility. So our tank size is our biggest tank right now is only 550 gallons, which, oh wow so that really, that caps you at about 400 cases per batch. Mm. And so, um, I think we have like 87,936 batches, Danny, over the last six months. <laughs> <Just Wow. a> <laughs> we, yeah, we almost There's hit a ton. <laughs> But so what we want to do is um, we're, we're still chipping away at some of the, the some of these orders for, for particular markets. But um, we're, uh, we're, we're actually laying, we just laid, laid down quite a bit of barrels that so that they could age through the summer. I think we just mm -hmm. laid down maybe 80 to 90 barrels um in kentucky so we can let them age in the summer where in the summer these things crank because it's hot and it's like everything's mm -hmm. open it's like you get this big rush so that we could kind of you know kind of really reintroduce it um you know kind of some point in the fall yeah i, I realize how far behind the chat i just want to get caught up real quick i see our friend jason oh, the nice. drum says Mike and Danny, what's up jersey boys i think jason did a um did a pick with you guys as well a while back ago right oh yeah yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. they I, have now they have a they have a toasted barrel that how long do you think that's been going i was i was talking to jason about this not too long ago maybe a week ago mm -hmm. it's probably been in there for six yeah months, it was months, uh, so. it was in the fall yeah that's all yeah dude, that we got it jason will kick you out a sample of that next week so you can take a we we tucked that it. we tucked that away and just it just <laughs> let it sit <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're, the Mash and Journeys whiskey, their, their picks have always been incredible. So that one sounds really exciting. I'm going to have to keep an eye out for that one. <laughs> uh, Swan said, I applaud you guys for leaning into the science. Most majority um, non-distilling producers or full non-distilling producers are just looking for good flavor, not the science. Also, kudos for using uh, gran Grunch Rosé. I mean, that's Grenache, not a word I'm not uh, familiar Grenache. with. Grenache. Okay. <laughs> Grenache Rosé on the Rosé finish. Yeah. yeah. Thank right, you. Thanks. Um, and I act like I know a lot about wine. I don't. I just. I, I. I actually think I just heard the term. I just started using the word Grenache like six months ago. I was like, yeah, I don't. I, I know. I've heard the word, but I have no idea what it means. <laughs> but I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm in California. I need to learn to be a. Need to learn to be a, a wine guy, but definitely bourbon first. <laughs> That's right, base. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> so cool. let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get into this um architect series so like you said you had the control bourbon this was kind of meant to be kind of the most i mean honestly well-rounded i mean you guys like it's literally a round flavor profile that was kind of was that kind of what literally you were going for like like kind of you know something kind of i remember yeah. we were actually upset by the fact that it came out to basically a circle oh we're yeah like, i called this guy well, I go, there's cool. no, like spikes there's nothing he goes no this is good i was like he no goes, no, no that's the one that tasted the best 
Well, you know, it's interesting. It's like some distilleries do try to make, you know, spikes. I've seen similar flavor charts done by other distilleries. Some try to, you know, spike in like the oaky direction or spike in the sweet, you know, direction. But there's a few out there that try to center that like very central flavor profile that's approachable to everyone. Um, I, know, I know Woodford, for example, when their flavor tasting wheel, they're the same way. They're like, oh, perfectly centered, no spikiness anywhere. So it's really interesting to see, you know, that this came out that way. Absolutely. So I so I actually I, I mean I've also gotten into my bottle before so <laughs> I've definitely let this open up a bit I think the first thing that hits me is that um, it's like a it's an oakiness but it's not necessarily like an like a really older oak if that makes sense mm -hmm. it's more of like a lighter like more like like freshly cracked like oak that's in there is that from those staves those French oak staves yeah, oh, yeah. and French oak in general I feel like gives gives that mm -hmm. um, impression as well yeah and I think it's it's kind of like I mean, it's it's lighter, and I think it's definitely fruitier than just the barrel strength because I've had a couple of those, and I think to me this one's like more bright, more. Um, it still has the oak backbone as always, but I mean, there's a lot going on in the glass. Um, is there a certain flavor profile you guys were targeting with this release in particular? There really wasn't. Um, somebody else asked us that today. I think. I know well, uh, you did. Um, I, I think, but we were we talked about it a little bit. That. I mean, I think we were like we because a lot of our a lot of our uh, a lot of our blends are just and it's by the nature of what we're using we've just seen a lot but you know we do get a lot of these kind of fruits and in some instances citrus notes in a lot of our mm -hmm. blends and we knew the french oak was gonna just by like what we had in the benchmark we kind of knew it was gonna potentially amplify that but also maybe round it out with some different kind of sweeter notes that maybe weren't necessarily what we've seen before so we knew it was going to add the sweetness to it just from what French oak we kind of assumed it would. But I, I think we've always, we kind of always go into these like open-ended, like mm -hmm. let's see what happens. And then, and then what we'll do is we can throttle it just like a blend. You can, maybe we do like 50% of that low tannin stave versus 60%. So like you can throt you're throttling it that way versus throttling it on a blend perspective. Gotcha. And I did want to mention, I actually forgot to mention this up top. I actually have samples of both releases we're trying tonight. I have the Architect um, that we're trying right now, and then we're also getting to the latest batch of the Barrel Strength Penelope. Um, samples of those I'm going to give away. Um, every su every $5 Super Chat that comes in tonight, you will be entered into the Wheel of Whiskey, um, just to say thank you to everyone that is donating tonight. So um, one winner at the end of the tonight stream will win both of those samples um, nice. from me. So just want to let you guys know that. I'll leave that ticker down there at the bottom. And and a t-shirt from us, too. I'm going to throw that into the ring. There you go. Even more. Thank you guys for that. Well, we, just, awesome. we just got new t-shirts in. The tri-blends, they're very soft. So we'll, we'll put that in there as well, too. They just That's came awesome. in today. Did you see that, Danny? Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> well, very cool. Thank you guys for that. So yeah, you guys throughout the night, we'll do the drawing at the very end um, of the stream here. Um, but I, I'm very excited to be able to offer those to you guys as well. And now you got a cool t-shirt. Very cool. <laughs> so this one, it's 104 proof. Um, now is that the, the barrel strength comes in at 115.8. Uh, so it's a bit higher. So you guys, do you guys, when you're, when you're deciding on the proof of this, I mean, do you, you try it obviously probably at cast strength. Um, how did you guys come across, come down to this proof for this release? For the architect, right? Yes. Um, so we came up with the blend at cast strength, and then the one we liked. Then we started trying them at all different proofs down to a hundred. So we took everything from a hundred, hundred, one hundred two, all the way up to, I believe the blended at cast strength was like one fourteen, mm. and uh, one hundred four just kind of stuck out. I remember the the three finalists were one hundred four, one hundred seven, and. Uh, what was the last one? 110. 100 or 98 or something like that. Yeah. And then, so we, you know, and then 104 just kind of stuck out at us. It was the most balanced. It, um, it kind of had those uh, kind of what Mike was talking about, those like fruity kind of savory notes and uh, the, the oak wasn't overpowering. Mm -hmm. And I think, so I think what's interesting is I've noticed a lot of people that are blending focused are not afraid to put things out at lower proof, if that makes sense. Because a lot of people that are just, you know, sourcing single barrels, they want to put out at cast strength. But I think when you guys are getting like really experimental and trying things, I love that you guys are open to like, you know, not necessarily bring it down to 80 proof, right? But you want, you're like, you know, trying it at different things, different proofs and um, seeing what works best. That's really cool. You know, yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you. One of the things that's interesting, I haven't, Danny, we, we got, I was going to mention this tonight. We had this these folks in from Texas. Uh, they're they're a part of a, a, one of our bigger retailers out of Houston. 
Ali, great guy, um, really good, good folks. And um, one of our best products that we've been putting out that we just don't do often is a 95 proof. Mm-hmm. And it's and it is. I mean, they they were like they they. I mean, they loved it. It was just it is good because I think it's just it's more. You know, sometimes when you're drinking cast strength, I mean, it could be blended perfectly, but you know, sometimes just maybe you're not in the mood for 115 proof. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially yeah. when you're starting your night out, or you know, you're going to be drinking all day, you don't want to drink the cast strength stuff right up front. So, yeah, there's yeah. definitely a place place for all different proofs. That's really interesting. I just want to get caught up on the super chats. Hanging with Bill says, Mike and Danny, what's the next project you are thinking of? Well, hold on. Hold on. We'll get to that, Bill. We, we're going to ask, you know, I'll ask them that at the end no, of the stream. We'll come get to in that hot the end. with that question. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, I will make sure to ask them that at the end of the stream, but thank you so much for your super chat. You are entered into the giveaway. James Taylor also coming in saying, I never win. That's that's the good word, luck words on my channel because a lot of times someone will say I never win and then they win. So let's see what you're doing <laughs> there, right, James. All right. Nice. <laughs> um, Whiskey Mountain says, heck yeah, in for Penelope Whiskey and merch. Hashtag I never win. See? See, they know. <laughs> and I'm always known to just like throw other stuff in the box too, FYI. <laughs> oh, well, there you guys go. You know, take that for what you will. Whiskey Nose, another amazing channel here on YouTube, says, cheers, guys. Cheers to you, Whiskey Nose. And then Blind Squirrel with the $9.99 Super Chat sticker. I can't see the sticker on my screen, but you guys saw it in the chat. Uh, thank you so much, Blind Squirrel. So um, obviously with the giveaway, you guys will message me at the end, whoever wins, um, and we'll, I'll get your info over to them so they can yeah. get that out to you. And then Scott Pigsley saying, Penelope samples, yes, please. Thank you so much, Scott, for supporting the channel. So so yeah, but we'll, we'll get into those questions about the what's coming next at the end, because we always we always like to tease that at the end. Yeah. Um, Andrew, so what do you guys, I mean, you guys have tried lots of, I mean, you guys, I, I know, or Mike, for sure, you love bourbon. You've always been like a bourbon drinker. Um, you know, when you're, when you're drinking through Penelope, like what, what, which of the releases, like, do you gravitate towards more, do you like mix it up every now and then, or do you try to go, you know, like, oh man, my favorite release we've done so far is this. I'm just curious, you know, what, which of your releases do you guys typically just when you're just drinking, not working, just drinking, what do you go for? It's, that's a really good question. And I'll be honest, I don't know why it is maybe because my head's just like at on a particular product when we, when we release it, my palate changes like but it's like usually when like right now it's like i i i've been drinking the architect like Mm -hmm. that's what i've been gravitating towards um and yeah like just you know when we had the light whiskey out i mean we we didn't we actually didn't have even much for ourselves i think i got i grabbed like maybe two bottles of it uh but they were gone (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. i mean literally we didn't pull i we we and we don't even pull i mean we grabbed one or two for ourselves um, those, but, and, but then toast, it was mostly through the winter, mm-hmm. but it's that I honestly, my palate just kind of has been following that trajectory. And then I kind of look, I view barrel strength as, as all reliable. And mm-hmm. then, you know, the foregrain is, is I, I go heavy on the foregrain when it gets hot outside. Cause I, I like these lemonade drinks I make with it. It's just, I like to muddle some strawberries, put the foregrain in there and just do some lemonade, you know, strawberry lemonade with it. Oh, so wow. I'll probably, I'll, I'll bring, I'm going to be probably going heavy on those and, you know, maybe two months or so. <laughs> I would say like, I was like here in Southern California, it's already warm. I mean, it's going to be like 90 degrees this weekend, but you guys have a little bit more time to oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's still a little chilly here. Yeah. Um, what about you, Danny? Uh, I agree with Mike. Like right now I'm just drinking a lot of architect. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think just, you know, it's the, it's the new guy in town. Um, and then barrel strength is, is old reliable, but honestly, uh, I, and Mike knows this too. I'm, I I make this drink like it's my my go to refreshing kind of relaxing drink. I get like a big cup. I put crushed ice in it. And I put the eighty proof in it with club soda and lemon, and it's just oh. like so. Like, cl- crushed ice, kind of like like Sonic ice, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's like I've had a, I've had a bourbon smash that was like it was like blueberry syrup. It was um, bourbon and then the crushed ice. I really enjoy that. So. I just squeeze yeah. the lemon in there because the the eighty proof goes really well with like ginger and citruses and mm-hmm. fruits, and it's just you know it's just refreshing, delicious, and it's like a, it, it's an escape from barrel strength that you drink all week that I drink all week long. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, I mean, I, I rips those on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm. So, I tend to, you know, gravitate towards barrel strength. But like you said, I, I love a good cocktail, especially during the summer, the hot months. And um, yeah, like you said, like the lower proof, that's the perfect time for them. Because yeah, I mean, you could put barrel strength in it, but like, why waste your delicious barrel strength when you could, you know, have something that's kind of made for the lighter flavor profile and mm-hmm. that blends really well. So, 
Um, absolutely. Um, Whiskey Mountains, and for another super chat, she says, with the Architect series, um, will future releases be aiming for more specific points on that little map on the back of the bottle? So it's not necessarily about the map because I, I wouldn't, I don't, I, I think we, but what was interesting because we're working on the second one and it's, you know, this we're calling, we call these builds instead of batches, mm -hmm. but um, to go with the theme and, right. you know, we're, we're using a different French oak stave. So this is, it's a little bit different. Um, but we, you know, we kind of looked at this because now we know the flavor profile of the architect and I, you know, you do kind of, I mean, this is literally what we got sent from the Cooperage. So you kind of look at it and you're like, okay, where, like, where do I want the next one to go? And you, we did, I mean, I remember doing it, but it wasn't necessarily, we were like trying to hit a certain point of it. Like you like you had mentioned, maybe more so a dick. It's kind of like more like what we think we wanted to bring it to. I don't know. It's a good question. Actually, maybe we did. Yeah, well, and, and that's the we, thing. We, like wanted, you said, we wanted to go, I'm sorry. We wanted to go um, kind of like on build number one, just, kind of ease into the whole French oak thing, right? Like mm -hmm. not go too intense on, uh, you know, on the, on the, on the oak. And I think on build two, we're leaning towards sort of a little heavier on the oak, a um, little more intense, some darker notes. Um, and, and just kind of like br bring people into that category a little farther, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I was curious because, I mean, a lot of people, I guess, maybe not realize that it is a series. I know on the back it says Architect series, but I've heard a lot of people just refer to this as, oh, this is the architect. So I think a lot of people may not know that there's going to be a series coming. So I'm really excited to see, you know, what the next one is. And it, it, again, it's it's something new to people. They're not used to this, you know, like it, they assume, you know, it goes to certain directions, but you guys are kind of just experimenting with it, right? Yeah. And it's it's been fun. I, you know, I what I what's interesting is so the the uh, Redu, the the Cooperage that we work with, I mean, th there's this stave program that's actually within the, you know, it's got to fall in that oak scan process, like we said, but they're, they're you know, they're now introducing these American oak staves um, into this program. They're, in, they're you know, there's going to be uh, Umbriana staves coming out of Brazil. There's going to be, there's going to be a wide spectrum of staves outside of French oak. So now while French oak is where they started, you know, obviously mm -hmm. they're in France. Um, mm -hmm. They, I think they now have like six iterations of different French oak staves. Um, so I think it's interesting, like we're kind of like one or two steps behind them and seeing how it's going. But even what's even cooler now for bench trials, they have these uh, uh, concentrate packets. We've mm -hmm. never seen this before. So they, if we like think about a stave, they could send us almost like a liquid concentrate that we can put into our blend at a very certain percentage. And it, it's actually... 10 times faster than running a bench trial. Like you can so, know it almost instantly, you'll know what it will taste like. You don't have to so, wait for six weeks. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You don't have to wait six weeks. So concentrate, like it's more of like the actual whiskey that's already been infused with that. Or like, what is, is that just like for the test trials or um, just because these guys are nerds, they, they like hearing about this. So like what, tell us a little bit more about hey, what that is. You got, you're the one that got the concentrates. I wanted them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually, I don't know what, the liquid is made of it, but it's, it's like liquid. It's, it's water based. Mm -hmm. And then I'm not sure where the flavor actually comes from. I don't know if they, how they extract it from the, the actual toast or the wood, but, uh, I wish I knew more. <laughs> and is that, so, so just, just for clarification, is that like, is that like actually infused into the whiskey or is this just kind of like, just kind of like a trial, like practice? Oh, no, this is just oh, for it's, trial. it's purely just to like, kind of gauge on the direction you want to go gotcha. with the actual wood. Yeah, like oh, okay. so as as a as an example. So as an example, like when we started the rose cast finish project, mm -hmm. we went out and bought a bunch of rose and we had just our regular barrel strength. We then would just use some RO water, proof it down maybe to like a hundred. And then mm -hmm. you just start taking rose and you pour about, you know, depending on how much you have in your glass, about five percent in there. Mm -hmm. And but that's still that's gonna not gonna be as exact, but you get an idea, is this cast finish worth going down, right? You could do that with gotcha. any wine. I mean, just put about five, what, three to 5% of whatever, mm -hmm. however much volume you have in your glass. And mm -hmm. you got an idea of it. Is it worth even exploring, if that makes sense? No, so absolutely. Concentrate, so the concentrates, we just, I mean, yeah, well, what we should ask, that's a, I mean, what's a good question? It's not fireball. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it is, it's a way that uh, we'll cut down on that six week. Because when we run the bench trial, we're literally putting like, staves into liquid 
and mm -hmm. letting it extract yeah. for six weeks. <laughs> Yeah, and you guys talked a little bit about um, or when we talk about the toasted series. I imagine it's the same. You guys are like actually putting the staves down into the barrels. Is that is that what I remember correctly? Like how you guys are doing the the toasted? Well, the toasted you guys are putting them in a new barrel. I'm just trying yeah. to remember what the process was with that one. Toasted, exactly. toasted. We blend three different mash bills um, of bourbon into a tank. We have our mm -hmm. blend, and then we rebarrel that blend into new oak barrels. Gotcha. Fifty okay. gallon new oak barrels. And with, with this art. one, the staves are inserted into a barrel that already exists, or is it like a a new barrel as well? With this one, we we do the three bourbon blend into a mm -hmm. tank, and then we add the staves in bundles into the tank. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good to know because these guys have been curious about like finishing because there's so many people that do it different ways. You know, sometimes we'll you know they'll chop up the wood the wooden blocks and put them in there, and it's just interesting yeah. to see how people do it differently. So, and, then, and that, that way. The the bar the barrel influence stops right, so you, mm -hmm. you you cut that off, and now that stopped. Now you know the only thing influencing that whiskey is are the staves that are in there. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically, Adam, a controlled uh, environment. Absolutely, yeah. Adam says, by the way, twenty dollars super chat. Thank you so much, Adam. He says, I'm known as the Penelope guy in our Memphis group, nice, so man. I definitely need some new samples and swag. <laughs> oh, he's trying to win. He's trying to win them tonight. Okay, well, Adam, good to hear from you again, man. That's awesome, dude. That's that's awesome. Yeah, we got to get down to Memphis, by the way. Yeah, we got to make a trip there. Yeah, thank we'll you so much. We'll make a trip there soon. Whiskey Nose says giving away an architect bottle on his stream next week. You guys make sure to tune into Whiskey Nose. Yeah, that's awesome. No, that's oh, cool. awesome, man. We'll definitely yeah, check man. that out. Marty Engineer, awesome. And then Donald Rents, all the way up in Canada, says, good evening, folks. Just dropping in to say hello and cheers. I know uh, I rewatched the stream that we did last time, and you guys said you guys were actually in Canada. Are you guys still in Canada? <laughs> just just for our one Canadian viewer. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, no. Good to see you, Donald. Yeah, we are. We're uh, we're still with uh, – we have a great partner up there, Evergreen, um, and we're, we're still in Alberta. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's going great. We love it uh, up there. Yeah, and the Swan says, outside of bourbon, what spirits do you pull inspiration from? Good question, Swan. Thank you for that. That's a good question. Um, I think it depends on how I look at that. Like, there's two facets of uh, spirits. There's the marketing side, and then there's the actual product side. Um, so from a product perspective, uh, you know, I mean, I have a lot of great, I mean, I love a lot of bourbons. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, 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 I honestly, I mean, we... Uh, I've always, you know, I think what, uh, a lot of what Buffalo Trace puts out is phenomenal. I mean, not obviously. Um, Danny, why don't you go? I want to think about that a little bit more. It's a good question. Um, I, I always say, I always think this actually, um, but I don't know if anybody agrees. I, I take inspiration from music almost because I look at whiskey and bourbon kind of like how I like music. Like, I like a lot of stuff. I mean, I like anything from classical to like hip hop to, you know, EDM. <laughs> so <laughs> and I kind of think about that the same way that I look at whiskey. Like, I like anything from scotch to Japanese whiskey to bourbon and all types of bourbon, rye. What, oh, I'm just getting into rye. I can't say I, I really like rye yet. <laughs> <Gotcha>. <laughs> but, um, I, you know, music's got to have, you know, like some sort of rhythm tempo. It's, and it's got to feel good to me. And it, you know, the, the way I like one set of mu one type of music, somebody might hate, you know, kind of thing. And I, I look at whiskey the same way. And that's kind of where I draw the inspiration. Like, can I get it in this, in this just realm of kind of uh, like balance, you know, that somebody could consider it within the world of whiskey, you know, mm -hmm. and kind of like music, like, does it have rhythm? Does it have, does it meet like some core performance factors? Absolutely. And then after that, it's all subjective, I think. <laughs> yeah. And Danny, you know, I mean, like when we had started this, like when we started this, we had always said like, whatever everyone else is doing, we're going to do the opposite. <laughs> right now. I don't know if it's, uh, that's always the case, but like we've, uh, we're kind of in a bubble a little bit. I mean, we really literally like part of our, our wives, like part of us, like getting into this, like we don't have, I mean, the, that's my whiskey collection behind me. It's like a bunch of Penelope bottles. Um, <laughs> we don't have, I mean, we're kind of a little in a bit of bubble because it's not that we don't love, like I, we drink all sorts of different whiskeys, but um, it's interesting. Like my biggest thing is that like we really, Danny and I really do bring a consumer approach to it. Like, do we like it? Is it like, do we like it? Like, is it good? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you think? And I think that's always, you know, and so I don't know, it's not a great answer, but no, no, that's good. And I, I, I'll have a follow-up question kind of related to that. I always ask at the end. I'll save that. But um, 
Um, one of jo- Joe's dropping the link to the podcast. Yeah, you guys, just so you guys know, new podcast episode comes out tomorrow. I'm reviewing, speaking of weird, weird, interesting opposite directions, I'm reviewing a fortuitous union. Have you guys heard of that one? It is a rum that's blended with rye whiskey. It's Ooh, super oh, okay. strange and super weird. Um, but Swan in the chat actually sent me a sample of that. So podcast tomorrow, you guys, I'm, I'm reviewing that. So you guys make sure to check that out. <laughs> Sorry, I just want to drop that because I saw the link come up. But Heck yeah. Um, very close. So, man, I'm missing a lot of the chat. If you guys, if you guys asked a question earlier, sorry if I miss it. Feel free to say it again. I saw that James Taylor said you guys are also in London. Wow. We got it. We got our guys. Yeah, our uh, <laughs> world of whiskey. That's awesome. Uh, you know, and honestly, sometimes like sh- the international stuff is actually really easy. So, so there, it's, it's interesting. Like working. Um, the, you know, obviously you got, we're in the U.S., but like we're focused on trying to expand our distribution in the U.S. But there, there's a lot of like, you have to get new permits, you have to get this, there's a lot of steps you have to take to get into a new market in the US. Mm-hmm. But with some of the international markets like Australia, um, London, uh, the UK, I mean, it's it's actually very, it's much easier just to export the product. Mm-hmm. They come to our facility in New Jersey, pick it up. You don't have to change anything. There's no new bottle design. There's no labels, cha- nothing. And I mean, I think it's one little piece of paperwork when it hits customs when it lands in that particular country and it's, it's done. So it's, yeah, it's been kind of fun and, you know, we don't, we don't have too much uh, uh, internationally, but the, the, definitely the world of whiskey, they're great folks. That's awesome. I actually didn't realize you guys were over there. So that's mm-hmm. awesome. Um, our friend Todd over from two ten nineties in the chat. He <laughs> says, we absolutely love the Penelope light whiskey can also yes. get you in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, can. <laughs> A lot of trouble. <laughs> what, what, what proof did that come out as like the, the batch that you guys released with the light whiskey? We had a few. We did, but uh, we had a batch. So the batch was one twenty eight point four. Okay. And then, um, and then we had what well, we had. So we basically then we only had we had a very small amount. It wasn't a lot. Um, and then we had five single barrels. And the, like like so this like Kentucky, we sent it one barrel like a barrel to Kentucky as like just and I don't know it was maybe twenty twenty five cases, but uh, that was one twenty one point two proof. That was, okay. I think that was Danny's favorite. Danny really liked that 121. And I think the highest one we had was maybe 136, 137. I mean, so that's we didn't have, there was no hazmat. <laughs> nothing yeah, but that's that. still, that's, that's still, I mean, light whiskey. I mean, you guys don't know, like, I mean, it's, it's can go into the, is it, I forget, can it go into the barrel at any proof or can it be distilled at any proof? I don't, I don't know the logistics of it, but um, you typically see a lot of high proof light whiskey. <laughs> yes. I think it's ours went into the barrel at like 189.5. Oh, wow. Wow. But I don't even know if there's a rule around it. I think you can. I like, don't think there is either. I think that's yeah, why it's, it's like, like a wild west. That's crazy. So, yeah, I've heard so many good things about that one. Um, well, let's go ahead and get into the uh, the newest batch. I believe the newest batch of the barrel strength, the batch mm-hmm. 10. Is this the, the newest one? Yeah. Cool. So this is the four grain, as we talked about a bit earlier, um, which I mean, they, they're both four grain, I imagine, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is the four grain, but it's the same as your standard, the standard release you guys put out. Um, you guys just do different batches of the barrel strength. I think last time I had you guys on, it may have been batch six. I don't remember exactly which one it was, but uh, seven uh, probably. If I okay. Guess. Gotcha. So with the, these different batches, I mean, is it roughly the same kind of, you know, the same whiskey you're using for this blend? Or are you guys changing it up every batch? Um, what, what makes the batches unique? We're, we're using the same uh, mash bills. So it's the same three bourbon mash bills at MGP that we're using to blend the batches. Um, but they're different lots. So they're different lots of barrels. So they could be from different warehouses at MGP. They could be different floors, uh, different time of year. But, you know, the, the essence of the story is that these batches or the, the group of barrels that we use for each of these batches is different in, in uh, nuances. So... Um, so when we go to blend, you know, maybe we may go a little heavier on the 21% rye mash bill if that batch of barrels is kind of speaking to us or is coming out with the the, the best notes. Um, maybe it's the 45% wheat. Um, mm-hmm. So it's really just taking the set, the group of barrels that we have in front of us at that time and blending them, blending them together the best that they can be blended together instead of just trying to shoot for a specific profile. Gotcha. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and also the other thing too, barrel strength is like, we don't even make a big, like if you go to our website, like it just is like, probably says like barrel strength batch six is out. Like we, <laughs> we don't, we don't make, um, we, cause with our, with barrel strength, we want it oh, like all of our products. We try to just make readily available. I think like the light whiskey, that's might be because that was like a, just so small, but 
generally like toasted, like we want to, we want to get our products out there. Like we want to, like we're, we're trying to be readily available, if that makes sense. Like, which I think is the opposite. I think a lot of brands try to, they, you know, they try to tighten their supply, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I would assume Buffalo Chase probably has millions upon millions and millions of barrels sitting away, mm -hmm. but that's their model. That's fine. They obviously do doing something right. Mm -hmm. um, but for us, our model is we want to be readily available at as best price point that we possibly can. And so we don't necessarily make a big thing about our, our new batches. Um, but like Danny said, there, you know, there, there's a lot of time and effort and energy that go into it. And um, we actually we do have a little fun thing. And I'll kind of give you guys the information on how might if you might want to join it. But if for every new batch we do, we um, we always invite some people. We do a Zoom call internally. We send you four different, five different iterations of the new barrel, potentially the new barrel strength blend, and just have a conversation with a bunch of folks and get feedback on them. And generally, we make a decision like on that Zoom call, and it's wow. fun. And we just started that probably on batch seven. Yeah, because what happens Matt, is Matt Ward from our team uh, heads it up, and you know, it might, you might not get on the like the, the next one or the next one after that, but like we try, we're trying to get through to get everybody involved because they're fun. I mean, actually, they're actually a fun, it's a fun Zoom we do. So do people, can people like go on the website and kind of contact you guys through that if they are interested in um, something like that? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, you can email, it goes through our info at PenelopeBourbon.com. The, the info email goes to like all of us internally, gotcha. but, but it's also Matt at PenelopeBourbon.com. Gotcha. And uh, we just have a running list and he kind of just, we just kind of go off of when folks reached out. That's awesome. That's, I, that's the first I'm hearing of that. So that's really cool. I like that you guys involve your community and people that are, you know, fans of the brand. I mean, that's, it, that's the number one, right? You, you guys are, you know, like you said, you guys are bourbon fans first. You guys taste to make sure what, what you're putting out is good. Whereas, you know, you're not just some CEO sitting in an office somewhere like, ah, send it out, you know? So that's, no, that's really special. I just realized they, well, remember batch nine, batch yeah. nine. So we did the zoom, right? And someone, I forget who it was. I think it was, I don't know. It was, I forget, but it was, uh, they took, like, we had a, we had a sample B and a sample D and they literally just like <laughs> yeah. dumped them in together mm -hmm. and it was like really good. And that was batch nine. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> we, I mean, Danny had to go back and like throttle it and like, look at the numbers and like, try to get that, obviously the exact, right. <laughs> but literally not as, not as simple as mixing two part. samples at the time. <laughs> yes. Oh, I can't. Do you remember that was fun? Actually, yeah, that was cool. That like, actually, it so was that's the thing you never know. That's why we get we you know we start we maybe come up with you know 40, 50 different iterations of these blends and we whittle it down and when you get down to like four blends, you, you kind of like them all. So it's like eeny, meeny, miny, mo at that point. So that's why we like bring other people in and kind of talk through it. And it's good to get everybody else's opinion and be like, all right, well, yeah, that's what this batch is going to be. You know, maybe it's want to go heavier on the chocolate notes or, mm -hmm. um, you know, the the orange zest of what was that batch? <laughs> five. Batch five. Yeah. I was going to say, I've, I've seen a few other channels kind of like have like several batches in a lineup and like say like, what's the best batch? But always by the end, they're like indecisive because like oh they're like oh i like how this one highlights this note but this one's better because it's this like it's always indecisive because they're always a little bit different every time and, and the interesting thing too is like so when we started the company i mean we only had two-year-old barrels mm -hmm. and we did that's how we wanted i mean we didn't i mean we just felt that was a better strategy for us like just start young and you know just slow and steady and our barrels are getting older and and we've set up our, uh, you know, the way we work with MGP, we're kind of set up that that age is just continually increasing. So hmm. it's it's like it's not the quick jump out to, say, like a seven year, but right. it's it's that slow and steady while we still have a lot, you know, the inventory to get it out to shelves. Mm -hmm. Which Definitely. is cool. Um, Troop 160 um, said um, barrel strength toasted architect. Love them all. Hoping to snag an American light whiskey. Penelope can do no wrong. You got a fan nice, the house there. Awesome. Um, awesome. I know it's 21090 also said seal boxes are go to for all things Penelope. We were talking a bit about that earlier. Um, you're pretty much your whole lineup is available there, right? Seal box. They, they, he, Blake has been a great, Blake's been awesome. Yeah. I he, definitely on seal box for sure. Yeah. So if you guys are not in, you know, the areas that they distribute, um, definitely check Sealbox if they can ship to your area. Um, I know they, they have a lot of not just Penelope, but they have a lot of the smaller brands that we don't see nationwide. Um, so I'm a, I'm a huge, huge fan of Sealbox. So you guys yeah. definitely check them That's out. Awesome. 
Um, 21090 with another $10 super chat says, love bourbon bites and love Penelope. Cheers, guys. Nice. Well, hey, thanks Here so much, Todd. Uh, by the way, the giveaway I'm going to cut off in about five minutes. So if anyone wants a chance to get these two samples of the two things we're trying tonight, as well as some Penelope t- a new a Penelope T-shirt, um, and maybe some surprises, as he said, <laughs> just... you guys get your entries in. But thank you again. Thank you all so much for the support tonight. Seriously, it does mean a lot and helps make the channel makes it possible. So, yeah, this this. So I don't have anything to compare it to, but I I do think that the reputation you guys have with this barrel strength is so high. People, they sell out really quickly. I mean, people love what you guys are doing blending wise. It's always a hitter. I've, I've not, I, and I'm not even just saying this cause you guys are on, I've not heard anyone say anything bad about any of the barrel strengths. Um, now Danny's going to, he's going to go to sleep on a high note tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, you guys have such a reputation that I, I think I, it's kind of un, not unheard of, but it's kind of like interesting to see such, you know, a new brand be so well received just in the community in general. That's awesome. That's no, yeah, it's surreal. Yeah. So I, I always joke around. I'm like, well, don't tell them we're from New Jersey. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's our home. We love Jersey. That's our spot. We love it, but no, it's been honestly. I just think we're we're we we like we we love this. This is we like this is fun for us, and you know, I think it's we like being part of the community. And I mean, that's that's the best part about it for us. Right? Really is it really is. Mm-hmm. We and have I so many know, friends. Like it's funny. We go like we went down a Kentucky Bourbon Festival, and we got an Airbnb, and it was like Greg from uh, you know, we just had a whole crew of people that we had never would have known mm-hmm. three years ago. But now they're all close friends and we're just continually meeting new folks all the time. And it's awesome. Heck, I want I mean, I, I'm, this is it's cool. I really like it. Yeah, I think I mean, I, I didn't really think of it that way. But like you guys do a lot to be involved in, you know, the community. We call it the Whiskey Tube community here on YouTube. But um, I think you guys are doing a lot of outreach. You guys are being featured on a lot of shows like this. I mean, thank you again for coming on. Um, but you guys are going to, like you said, festivals and stuff. You guys are getting your name out there, whereas a lot of brands kind of fall behind. So you guys, I think that's part of it. I think that's why people are, you know, loyal and huge fans of what you're doing. And it does pay off. I think I, I just I just hear so much good stuff about you guys. And I'm excited to see where it goes next. Thanks. Oh, thanks, Clifton. That yeah, I means I, I just go back. Dan, you know this, like. Like we genuinely like this is fun. This is like we love talking bourbon. Like it doesn't have to be about Penelope. We can talk about anything. Like we're, we love. It's awesome. An independent Joe dropping in says, "I'm I'm in love Penelope. Great bourbon. Cheers all. Cheers to you, Joe. Thank you so much for entering." All right, we're gonna go back to Bill's question that he asked a long time ago. He was saying, "What do you guys have coming for us next?" You mentioned a little bit about Architect Series Two. Um, is there anything else in the works you guys can kind of like tease us tease us on a bit? We have a, uh, we do, we have a few. So um, we have uh, we we'll, we have more rosé we're bottling. So rosé is just kind of like when we get barrels and it's just, it, that's always, that's trying to always get that one out there. So we'll, we have some more rosé that's going to be coming out, just going out to the market that are the markets we're in um, over the next two months. Uh, but we have this really kind of interesting one right now. It's a, and this is kind of a limited one. I mean, it's not meant to be limited, but it's just, we only had 11 barrels of this Tokai cast finish. This this uh, I don't know what like that is. Hungarian what is that? Uh, white sweet wine. It's like a white wine. It's it's different. It's unique, mm. and uh, I I don't even know how we went into the Tokai route. And again, this was with our our partner Rob from Spaceside. Mm-hmm. He well, he sends these emails, and these emails, his subject header, they say exotic barrels. Oh, okay. So it's like a shopping list, and it's hard to say. Like you're like he's got. I mean, he had, like one of the emails had like triple sec barrels from Cyprus. I mean, oh, I'm wow. talking crazy stuff. So, I mean, yeah. literally, it, the subject header is very validated because there's always stuff. And I don't know what Tokai, I asked him about it. He goes, oh, this is going on and on. I said, well, that sounds interesting. And we brought in two of them and we did one straight bourbon blend or four grain and put it in there for a few months. Then we did uh, a, 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 just a rye, just so a 95.5 rye from MGP, just mm-hmm. to kind of take it down the runway. Um, and we really liked the rye. The rye was interesting. And so... Uh, long story short, we end up getting some really, really good barrels from a from a company based out of Vermont. You may all know, and uh, they were in upstate New York, and they were these delicious six and a half year ninety five five MGP rise, and we put them in I don't know eleven, twelve, three hundred fifty liter Tokai barrels. So that should be we're gonna try to get that out there. I mean, early next. I mean, there's not a lot. I mean, there, that's three. That's not a ton of it, but we'll 
send it out. Is it le- is it more or less than the the the? Uh... It's it's more. It's okay, more than the light whiskey. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Good to know. Sure. Good to know. Um, right, yeah. Yeah, Emily's saying whiskey tube, come for the whiskey, stay for the community. Thank you, Emily. I agree completely. And we see Swan is excited about the to- Tokai. Yeah, I-, I would never know how to spell that. So I assume that's the way. <laughs> Dude, you know, it's so funny. I have said that 19 different ways. I would be, <laughs> oh, it's Tokaji. And and that's my bit. That was my, my biggest concern with it is like it's hard to pronounce. Like I I mean it took me like months. I had it I had it wrong forever. I know. But uh, no, it's Tokai. Yeah. Oh, and then he says that's actually the same thing that the Glen Morangy uh, Tale of Cake was finished. And actually, I had a, I tried that at a friend's house. I didn't realize um, what cast that was finished in. Interesting, um, but a rye man, a rye in that that could that sounds really good. And these were these were very like we before we took on these barrels. Like we we actually went back to MGP. We you know we're like, hey, can you look at the batch of code? They shared the distillate notes from those barrels, and they lived up to the, the they, we had, uh, got offered four different lots and that one was, they were exceptional and they really are really, really good. So, mm-hmm. and then we wanted that's, to get more of them and they didn't have any more for us. That sounds, that sounds super interesting. I'm really excited to keep an eye out. Hopefully get my hands on that one. Um, yeah. People in the chat are picking up where the Vermont barrels are from. I'm not going to feature anything on the chat, but yeah, yeah y'all, you guys know what's up. Um, so, okay, very cool. Well, okay, last question for you guys. While I get the wheel of whiskey ready to spin, I'm going to cut off the giveaway now for everyone that's entered. Y'all are, y'all are entered. Thank y'all again so much for entering. Final, okay, it's two questions. Okay, first one is, when you're not drinking Penelope, what have you been drinking lately um, for both of you guys? Just just non-Penelope related, what have you been drinking? Just let me know. <laughs> Water. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> oh, like when I got, I mean, their recreational drinking has literally lost all of its appeal. And I'm not being, okay. I'm being serious. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. I just can't want to relate. Water. But... <laughs> yeah, Danny, I don't know. I mean, or maybe, maybe, uh, I, I, yeah, I'd say water. Okay. Good answer. Good, safe answer. What about you, Danny? <laughs> <laughs> so, somebody recently, our friend Greg, had this, uh, this Bowman limited release. Oh, yeah. 141 proof. And, oh, uh, wow. yeah, every time he, like, turned around, I was, I found myself kind of just pulling out of it <laughs> but that, that was, was that's well, like a that that's a one best, and done i thought that was the best bourbon of last year that when that came that to what that that, that bowman was at the single Is barrel that the, oh wait you know what i think my store had that in a um lottery and you know what i had that high on my list i didn't get picked for it i, I ended up getting um shoot i already forgot what i got but that was high on my list and I, I didn't get it so i've heard i've heard amazing things about that bowman that was, it was, ex- and I remember Greg was like, you can only have one sip of it. Yeah. <laughs> By the end of the weekend, the whole bottle was gone. <laughs> bourbon, oh. bourbon, I got you. You're good. You're good. I, I, there's a bit of a delay. He said, looking forward to trying Penelope for the first time. Just kidding. Do the, oh, just kidding. <laughs> He's had a lot. Oh, do, nice, the new, do the new t-shirts come in my size, AKA small billboard. Keep up the stellar word. word. Ben, ben, you got to come out to the spot, man. Ben's out in Long Island. We got to get him out here. Uh, well, Ben, I included you in the giveaway. No worries. Um, okay, final question. Um, I, I mean to ask this to all my guests. I do a bit of a gaming twist on my channel. Do you guys play any video games? I may have already asked you this, Mike. I don't remember if I asked it to you last time. Do you, have, were you guys gamers growing up, or did you play any like classic like arcade games? Like, did y'all have any of that in your lives growing up? I mean, like Nintendo. Yes. Zelda. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Golden Eye. Oh, I mean, cool. 007. <laughs> 007 yeah. Golden Island Nintendo 64. I played that with my friend. Every time I went over to his house, that was our go-to. We always played that. It's such the a good proximity game. mines. Right. Oh my gosh. I haven't I haven't played it for in years. I need to go back and I think it's on the Switch now. I need to go check that out. But yeah, huge fan of that one. And most of my most of my channel is like the retro gaming. So as soon as someone says Nintendo, I'm like, yes, yes, go on. Like yeah. I don't, you know, I don't do Call of Duty here on the channel. I don't do any like the modern stuff. I love the classic stuff. So <laughs> I miss Very that, man. When I was I remember playing Zelda when I was younger. And you get like the, the 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 golden triangle, and you'd hold it up or whatever. I forget what it was or something. It was that was a good game. That was really good. Yeah, all the legends, all the cheats on Goldeneye. That's right. I remember that. Yeah, um, yeah there. <laughs> it's it's so funny to see like the, the way that cheats were like in older games. Like it's so different now. Like yeah, you can cheat and like get money and stuff, but like back then you could basically be invincible and you could just like rush through the game and just kill what everyone. Was, oh my gosh, what was the game where it was like up, down, back, right? Forward, Contra? Forward. Contra? Contra, yes. Yeah. 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 That was the original cheat code, right? Like that was the yeah. one that like that that started it all. I you know what? I actually didn't grow up playing that. So my first console was Super Nintendo. That came oh, out, I think, on NES, the original Nintendo. So I missed that generation of gaming, but I did play it a good bit later in life. And it's so hard. I cannot I can't get very far without cheating because it's <laughs> so hard. 
games gotten easy have gotten easier nowadays i swear <laughs> that's funny I was oh, the, the the triforce. Right oh yeah the, the the triangle symbol in legend of zelda is triforce, triforce that's right oh, very cool well i always just like ask that i guess that question because it's always interesting to hear like what people grew up playing but um before i let you guys go y'all want to stick around for the wheel of whiskey spin to see who wins these samples hell yeah <laughs> Let's do it all right so we got everyone entered here that's super chat tonight. Thank y'all so much again for that. Um, I've shuffled it a couple of times. So your names are all in there. The amount of times you gave, don't worry, I double checked. Um, but y'all ready to spin the wheel of whiskey. Let's see who wins. Listen, I got to commend you. That was good, um, good multitask. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> know you were doing that. I relied on you guys. <laughs> oh. And look who it is coming in under the wire, Bourbon. With the win there, he said he wanted. <laughs> he said he wanted that T-shirt. Well, Ben, congratulations! I will get these samples out to you, and I will get your info over to Mike and Danny on that team um, for the T-shirt and merch. Um, thank y'all. Well, Danny, and Mike, thank y'all so much for coming on. This has been so much fun. I know you guys said you wanted to come on again. You guys have something in the works for the fall, maybe. Um, so I would love to have you guys on anytime. Thank y'all so much. Um, it, where can people find you on the web? Is it just at the Penelope Bourbon Instagram, Facebook, or do you guys have personal ones you want to shout out? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, just Instagram. Honestly, like Instagram is kind of like our, like how we kind of even announce stuff, but our at Penelope Bourbon um, and our Facebook's just facebook.com slash Penelope Bourbon. Um, and, and that's really the two main spots that, that, are, that we, we were on the most, at least from our side. Gotcha. And Bourbon says, what were the samples? I think he came in a bit late. So That's Bourbon, right. you're, you're getting the samples of the, the two whiskeys you tried tonight. The, <laughs> the Arc I know, I know, but he won, eh? So the hey, Arc I on it. That's a good call. <laughs> and the barrel strength. So congratulations, Ben, on that. Um, I love how he, he entered without knowing what he was entering. He's like, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, no, I love you guys, and they, they do support the channel a lot. So um, awesome. make sure if you guys are watching the replay or you're watching it live, make sure to hit the thumbs up before you head out. Um, if you are watching it live, make sure to comment as soon as the stream ends what your favorite Penelope release you've tried is in the ch in not in the chat in the comments below. As soon as the stream's over, just refresh the page. Let me know your favorite Penelope release. But Mike and Jenny, thank you guys so much. This has been so much fun, and I look forward to having you guys back on again. Thanks a lot. Yeah, Clifton. thank you, man. Thanks, Clifton. Thanks everybody. Appreciate right. it. Cheers, everyone. Have a great night. Bye. Thank you.